Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. On this episode of the podcast, we have author Bobby Adair, creator of the book series Slow Burn, uh, one of my favorite zombie book series. And, um, and you can tell almost immediately because I completely geek out on the guy, poor guy. But they are just amazing books, and I think you will like them. I think you should check them out, and um, and you're going to love Bobby on the podcast. He's a great guy, super funny. You're going to love his wife. She's also wickedly funny, and um, we just had a great time with him, and now I can't wait to have him back on. We could we could have probably gone three hours easy. So anyway, you're going to enjoy it. Um, if you're a Bobby Adair fan, you're going to get to know him a little better, and if you're not, you're going to fall in love with him and get his stuff, so please do that. Um, as always, we're brought to you by Amazon.com. Go to our website, gtfopodcast.com, and on the top left there on the main page, there's a little banner. You're going to click on that. That takes you to Amazon.com, and you can buy all of Bobby Adair's books. What do you know? You can go and do that. Help the author. Help the podcast. And you get awesome books, so go to it. We're also brought to you by Geek Street Comics. You can find them on Instagram as Geek Street 101 for all your geeky needs. Check them out. And now, without further ado... Here's episode 38 of the GTFO podcast with Rupert and Chad with guest Bobby Adair. Got your happy ending. Feel the excitement build. Show down in a ghost town. Bad guys all get killed. So professional, dude. Is that That's what I love about this. We are... Just tip top. Hey, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But we all have baseball caps. Yeah. <laughs> go, go Hawks. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Go, go Cleveland. Hawks. <laughs> Seahawks. He's a Seahawks oh, fan. Right. It, He's got that angry chicken thing on his hat. Hey, settle down, <laughs> sir. Settle down. So are, are, we a, are we a Texas or a Houston fan when it comes oh, to baseball? Really either one. I just have a, oh, have a okay. longhorn cap. It's, it's UT, so it's like we have a big cow. Of course, dude, I can't say that. She said <laughs> she went to the opposing school. Well, they call it a school, but you know. They didn't say oh. funny. <laughs> so you guys are in Austin now, or yes, but you but you live in in Denver. No, we lived in Denver. We moved back. Oh, uh, gosh, two years ago now. Oh, okay. Did yeah, you I not did. read his bio on his page, dude? Come Does on. my bio still say Denver? No, it says you moved to Austin. Oh. <laughs> Here, I put a, a card. oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I was I was hoping to get that something like that done. So perfect. <laughs> that is awesome. She does actually. That's how we met. Uh, so, but like I said, my wife was just in um, Austin, and she loves it over there. We have friends there, and um, how do you like it so far? Oh, well, we lived in Austin before, oh. um, and then we moved, well, so we've been here a long time. Oh, okay. Um, so we like it mostly. Right on. Summer suck. I can you know, imagine. But what do you do? When we talk about May sucks. I was down there the beginning of May, and uh, just north of Dallas in Sherman. Oh, yeah. And 9.30 in the morning, it was already 80 degrees out. I'm like, holy shit, this <laughs> fall's hot. Yeah. 80 degrees, that's wonderful weather. I was going to say, dude, try Puerto Rico. Probably it's placement. a... It's like 97 and, you know, 130% humidity. It feels like you're walking through soup. That's, that's yeah, pleasant. Uh, oh, the, yeah. day that, the day we actually finished uploading the truck to move to Denver, um, was it like 9 o'clock at night when we were leaving? 104. And it was 104 oh, dear at Lord. 9 o'clock at night. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> so when you say 80 in the morning, I'm like, yeah, you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. I got to go back down there in three weeks. Yeah, go, oh, you'll love it. Yeah. Oh, because that's going to be near each other. A walk. friend of mine lives in Memphis, and he uh, he's a storm chaser. And he goes, next time you come down, come with me. I'll take you on a storm chase. And I'm like, oh, no that, shit. You're like rolling the dice, but okay, I'll go. Yeah, and that'd be fun. crazy, <laughs> don't. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go. This is going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to have some beers with you. And you people down there drive like maniacs. Everybody drives. If like it ain't 90, you, you better get in the slow lane if you're, not doing, if you're only doing 90. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you I'm get like, on, oh, on 35 shit. there, because 35 goes right through Sherman, right? The big right. highway. Yeah, they just haul ass. And so. that was scary as hell. And I'm like, I was with my <laughs> boss, and I'm like, hey, Kurt, how fast are we going? He goes, almost 100. 
And I go, and we're being passed? He goes, yeah. <laughs> he used to, dude. I, I thought, thought Montana was shit. bad. No, no. A, Montana ain't got nothing on Texas. Oh, uh, we live. We, it's we hot. Have, There's nothing out there. We have family in Montana. Out there, there's nothing. Yeah. Montana's got the hills until you get to eastern Montana. We just call that West Dakota. True. <laughs> it's just as flat and boring. <laughs> oh, awesome. Hey, thank you for calling in, man. I really appreciate it having you on the, on the show. And, um, like hey, I Chad, told, it's nice having you on the show. <laughs> yeah, finally getting me on the show. <laughs> yeah, Chad, thank, welcome, welcome. After Thanks for finally ha- getting me on half an hour trying to figure out why can't I add Chad to this freaking call? I've I've done this a couple of times and somehow once I've, or twice I figured it out. So thank you for coming, Chad, and um, welcome. Yeah, I'm glad I could be here. Yeah, no problem. But uh, <laughs> my name's not on the show or anything. That's fine. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me to my own show, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Oh, thanks a lot oh man yeah it's so so great to have you on man I, I like i said i really appreciate it like i told you before i'm a huge fan um i've been reading uh freedom's fire uh for the last week i'm a super slow uh read a reader you're, you're not reading it no i am reading it you know, I thought you were listening to that one. No, I can't because it's not on Audible, which is what I was just about oh. to bring up. Oh, you're right. It's not on Audible yet. Yeah. That's right. So That, that means was... I can't hear it because I leech off his account. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, wait. It'll be out. It'll be on Audible soon enough. Well, maybe not soon enough, but eventually. So how does that, how does that work? Does your uh, publishing company take care of that? Do you, you have to like no, call um, people? <laughs> it depends. It, it depends. Usually, I uh, um, the way I've been doing it for a long time is I just hire somebody. Um, and I've done a lot of work with, uh, uh, actually, um, the narrator who does Mark Duplo's book, Sean Burnett. Oh, I love that so guy. He's done, yeah. He's probably done probably nine, nine of my books so far. Nice. Um, but, uh, with black virus and black rust, um, my agent sold the rights to those books to audible studio. So they recorded those. Mm-hmm. And right now he's shopping around the audio, the rights for the Freedom's fire series. So I see. We'll see how that goes. So maybe, so he'll probably sell them to somebody, and then they'll give me a tiny little check. It doesn't mean anything, and uh, um, <laughs> and uh, um, eventually, probably it would probably be probably about two to three months before it actually shows up in the audio, audio store, oh, Audible yeah, store. Yeah, that was my so, so. that was my first move was to look it up on Audible, and uh, but I remember from the last uh, Slow Burn uh, book. That I did the same thing. I'm looking for part on Audible. I work outside all the time, and I, that's, I just yeah. love listening to, to to books, and couldn't find it. So I had to, you know, read a hard copy. Not even a hard copy because I have it on my Kindle, but still. Oh yeah, you know. Well, the thing with that was that I I never even thought about audiobooks until like this company contacted me about it and said, "Hey, we want to buy your audiobook, and we'll do it." And and I I guess I looked at it and said, "I don't need a publisher for that." <laughs> I can do it. I'll just go hire some guy I can find on whatever the site was, Odesk or something, you know. And and I liked him, so I was like, cool. I'll just you know pay him and we'll do it. And uh, um, so you kind of learn as you go, sort of thing. So that was probably gosh, a year, maybe over a year after the first book came out when I finally put out the audiobooks. Wow. Because I I just didn't really know there was a market for it, and it turns out there is. Oh so, my god! I've been <laughs> yeah. Everything's going that way. It seems Absolutely. everything's gone. I mean, I, I don't even listen to music anymore at work. I listen to podcasts. Me either. Me either. Oh wow! Yeah. And then I, old Rico here said, "Hey, you need to listen to some books," and I'm like, well, "Okay," because I don't read unless they're comic books because I like pictures, <laughs> and you know, they're easier to figure out. Oh way. yeah. And so he gave me an Audible account, and I listened to The Warded Man. It's 18 hours, and I got it done in like three days. Wait, the what man? Warded the warded man. man. The painted uh, man. Ah, uh, what is this? Did you look it up? I, my my keyboard it? does so. Uh, Peter. Hang okay. On. I'll look it up. Keep talking. Yeah, this is, I just invited him to the podcast. That's how awesome I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't remember his name. Ah, oh, here, very, very professional. Like, oh, I read it too. I was like, wow, that was great. Ah, oh. Peter V. Brett. <laughs> yeah, Peter, Peter v. Brett. v. Brett. That's right. Okay. I, I met him, uh, not met him, but I, I heard him at a uh, Worldcon, I think. Um, okay. I was on a panel. But um, great idea uh, for a book. This this world, there's demons that come out at night when the sun goes down. So everybody okay. puts these uh, hexes or wards, the, wards all over oh, okay. their houses. Okay. So that demons. Oh, I thought you said warts, like W A R T S. I'm sorry. I like to clarify. I will tell you this about 20 times during the podcast, but I am Puerto Rican and I have a bad, bad, bad accent. 
So, um, and he has a bad habit of talking all the time too. Yeah, <laughs> I should get a yeah exactly. And uh, anyway, it was a great. It's a great. Uh, I hate how book. that book ended though. It really? just uh, and I'm like, there's more. So yeah, well, you don't have them downloaded. So yeah, that's true. But well, yeah. I just listened to a great audio book um, by a guy named Dennis E. Taylor. Ah, oh, sounds familiar. Yeah, it's a, it's like a sci-fi book. Uh, um. And I think there are two out of the series so far. And um, God, I think Ray Porter is a narrator. Just fantastic mm-hmm. job. Yeah. And it's called um, like We Are Legion or We Are Bob or something, something like that. It's a weird. It's a bit of a weird name. All right. But a really good book. Oh. Really good pair of books. Uh-huh. We Are Legion. We Are Bob. No oh, kidding. Right that now. sounds yeah. so familiar. Like, I want to say. Oh, so yeah, it's, it's got. A, I mean, the audiobooks have a gazillion re- reviews. I think probably thirty thousand on the first one, like ten or eleven thousand on the second one. So there's a, there's been a lot of uh, audible traffic for it. So four point anyway. three out of five on Goodreads. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, because Goodreads people are a little bit uh, um, harsher. They're a little harder on their on their giving out the stars over there. Oh. So you get anything above a four, you're actually doing pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I think anything over a four there, you're doing good. So by Dennis E. Taylor. Dennis yeah. E. Taylor, yeah. I've I have heard of that. I haven't read it though. Um, it's good. Good advice. Yeah, give it, I'll give check it listen, out. Give, yeah. listen to the audio or the sample or whatever. If you like it, give it a shot. I I, I enjoyed them. So I have three credits burning a hole in my computer for <laughs> out of all, so. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I gotta use that up. I was saving it for Freedom's Fire, but um, yeah, I got it for like where I had like twelve credits, and I was like, I should download some stuff, just you know, oh, before yeah. they start taking it away. <laughs> I love it. it's such a it's such a great way to listen, especially if you do a lot of traveling or working yeah. outside, and you have just you know brainless oh, yeah, stuff absolutely. to do. You know. Plane flights to Texas for work. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, right. I do that. <laughs> now, so you are you live in Cleveland? No, I'm in Washington too. I'm oh, south okay. of him. I'm down near Tacoma where he's up past Seattle. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's no way me and him are meeting anytime soon to go sit in a room and talk for an hour because oh, that's no. like <laughs> Not for this guy. Each of us just get halfway. <laughs> it's weird. Is it like a, an hour, hour and a half away or? Uh, for me to him, well, I'd say it's Tacoma to. Hours. Yeah, almost two hours, and that's not even factoring traffic yet. So we're looking at. Oh yeah, so depending on the time of day. If you go yeah. through, yeah, if you go through Seattle on I five, it'll be uh, five hours. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's moving along. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, I live in theory. It's a, I think I believe it's thirty four miles from here to downtown Seattle. So you would think oh. it would take 8. you. <laughs> Damn, she's dropping numbers it's like on my, Rico. my Siri over here. <laughs> she's like my online fact checker. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kat, for keeping me. Keeping me Sorry, Leash. You're yeah. off our two tits of wine. Ah, I knew it. And, but it, it'll take my wife two and a half hours to get to, to work. It's just insane. Yeah, traffic is just no that good. That sucks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you know, you got to do it. Well, no one work. knows how to merge in this state. No one knows how to merge. Just slow down and let me in. It's no speed up and get oh, by the whole asshole. Yeah. That's what causes all the backup. And the worst thing is, God forbid, it rains. Which, by the way, is Seattle. It does, it does all the time. And, well, see, now that's, that's I yeah. think that's actually bullshit. Yeah. It is. Because every time You're I've been up the there, stereotype. it's been, it, the weather's been beautiful. And I think you people just lie to all the rest of us. Oh, so we, we absolutely won't do. there. We have to keep everyone away. We absolutely yeah, yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> make, it sound, make it sound like it's just pissing out rain all day long every day except for like two days a year actually it had been, yeah. all the california guys away it hadn't yeah, right, right. it hadn't hit 70 since i think it was the end of september until just recently like a week oh, ago like up, up to 70 yeah up to okay. 70 <laughs> yeah it hadn't hit up to 70 yes <laughs> Yeah, I think there was one stretch like I don't know a couple of years ago, uh, probably right before we moved to Denver, when it was like went like a hundred and some days without going below a hundred. Oh, well, I'm Lord. sorry, that's probably the exaggeration. The the daily high was over a hundred for like a hundred days, and it's like, oh, holy oh, shit, God. Ah, uh, that's see, that's see, I don't mind that. Oh, I, don't mind that. Up, I like dude. the extremes. You I like, say that. I, I like the real cold and I like the real hot. Because I I went to school over in Pullman, which is the east side of the state. And yeah. in the winters, you get wind drifts and whiteouts at school, and they shut the class down because you can't see anything. You're driving around on snowmobiles and quads to get down to the store and stuff. And in the summer, it's like, I can I shut off a layer of skin because it's, um, it's just hot. You wake up in the morning hot, and I, I just really? like I like the extremes. This middle oh. stuff is like, oh, okay, I can deal with it, but 
I prefer the cold, if anything, because you can dress for that where you can't really dress for the, the heat. You, you can only go put naked. on so many garments. Yeah. Exactly. You can only go naked and, you know, end up in jail. And still so, be hot. <laughs> yeah. And you're still hot. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. I know. Yeah, I Believe me, I grew up in Puerto Rico, and it's so freaking hot over there, and I had oh, really? just about enough. Um, I don't care for it. Um, then... I moved to Buffalo, which is the other freaking end of the spectrum, and I had, oh, dear Lord, had enough of snow, so I'm like right in the, I just love, I'm like the only guy in Seattle that walks around skipping when it looks like shit outside. You know, it's about to, it looks like it, you know, it had, we had, nobody's seen the sun in a month, and I'm like, oh, God, I feel so good. And uh, yeah, it's because I hate both of that heat and freaking snow. I can't stand it. But, well, um, it's like the, at work today, I'm driving to work this morning, and it's sunny out it's nice it's maybe 60 working its way up and I'm, I'm going down this road and i see mount rainier and it's nice and sunny out and everything and i go how can you not like to live here absolutely it's great yeah. Yeah. i mean yeah we have a couple of days where it's pissing out or it gets you know a little hot but those people are going to bitch about no, no matter what the weather is you know oh, i'm tired of the rain i want the sun the sun shows up oh, it's yeah. too hot i want that where the sun can go away i'm like you guys are just <laughs> bitching about it being too cold <laughs> now you're bitching about just, being too hot that's just being human yeah, yeah. yeah. true there's, but hey, the weather around here keeps you on your toes. That's true. You walk out of the house, you take a coat, you take a pair of boots, and you take an extra hat because you don't know what's going to happen. Oh, okay. Yeah, it could rain. It, 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 yeah, sometimes it's super nice, and then next second is you know not storming. <laughs> storming. Yeah, yeah. But there's so, a, so because we're like talking about about the weather, about the weather, does that mean like we're old people? <laughs> oh God, we <laughs> are. <laughs> Shit. God damn it. I just, yeah right. <laughs> it's like oh no, no. Should we just spend like fifteen minutes talking about the goddamn weather, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Great. What did you say? That's a great pod. <laughs> Let me tell you how howdy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Make me some tea. Yeah. Oh Jesus. There's a spot right on. Um, there's a trestle uh, before you get to my house, and it cuts e uh, west to east. And there's a spot you can see Mount Rainier down south and then you look up to the north and it's mon baker and they're both touching the sky and i can drive from where i live three and a half hours towards that mountain that i can see touching the sky and i get oh, nowhere goodness. near it wow. yeah i'm like just driving and driving and driving this thing keeps getting bigger and bigger mon, uh, mon rainier is just just What's the amazing i don't know yeah we got mount rainier baker bachelor mount hood and Mount St. Helens all right around us. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's beautiful. If they all got pissed off at one time, we're screwed. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. Yeah. Think about that for a minute. Oh, I do. Oh, I do write post-apocalyptic books. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And I love post-apocalyptic <laughs> stories and movies. They're my favorite. You will blow up Seattle. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> See? See oh, what you I did, Chad? Like yeah, be but here's the deal. I live on South Hill which is in Puyallup and is above the valley, like 438 feet or something like that. I don't know if your fact checker can grab that for me. Cat, um, cattle, <laughs> cattle, look it up. <laughs> uh, South Hill Puyallup. Enjoy trying to spell that. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, exactly. I was like, <laughs> well, she spelled Snohomish. I, so. love, I, love, I love when people try to call me. Yeah. <laughs> it's 438 feet. <laughs> oh, you found it? You serious? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's been out of bad. Hers is in Australia. <laughs> but no, we're, we're like we're just under 500 feet above the valley, and they say if Rainier blows, the main road coming up the hill, Meridian, it's a big four-lane road, that it um, is going to become a boat launch. Wow. Because oh, wow. the valley will flood out, and I'm like, I'm staying on the hill. Yeah, no And sure. buying a boat. So you're good. Just so there's case. a tsunami that comes in, you're safe up there. Yep. You know, when the lava flows go down, or what do they call them? The, the, the Har's. Yeah, everything you're good. Oh, they have lahar horns and everything down in the valley, and they have school. They have little tests for them and make sure they go out and they do their little, you know, prep work and get them all done. The kids all run make out. Make you think and you can actually class. outrun a tsunami? You're not going to outrun a lahar. Thanks hey, roll to the right. ball. You just float. Don't worry about it, Bobby. Oh my well, god! It was like when I was a kid. Yeah, um, on the Air Force base, it was like uh, um, we had all those those atomic war drills where you'd hide hide on your desk. It was like, yeah. really? <laughs> They're gonna drop a bomb under my desk. I'm gonna be just fine. <laughs> best place to be. <laughs> you know desk. what? They don't tell you is that wood they use has like you know 
lead, lead yeah, lead. it's lead lined <laughs> wood. They don't tell you that, you know what I mean? Because they don't want you eating it, you know. And they get how the kids you know got lead poisoning. Yeah, yeah. that's all that. Yeah, right. Makes... <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. god! Speaking of apocalyptic uh, landscapes, Slow Burn, one of my favorite right. uh, book series. I love the. It's to me is it's such a refreshing view of this genre that to have the refreshing and slow burn and post apocalyptic. Never mind, I like it. (laughs) (laughs) But it is no, but 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 it 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 is. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I can almost smell it, and. uh, (laughs) (laughs) But uh, no, I bet the the whole idea of it is just I I've never read anything like that uh, and i just love the the way that makes you think how oh, all in all that that means um how you can have somebody like zed and and have him be normal except he looks like a freaking zombie and um and and all the spectrum to the shumbling you know oh, yeah. zombies that regular yeah. zombies that's just great how did you was that like your first thing? You said, yeah, that's what I want to do. Or did that come later? How, how did that come out? No, it really, um, I think the inspiration came from um, those elementary schools on the Air Force Base and all the kids with lead poisoning. Because <laughs> you have different, <laughs> they're kind of on this, this intelligence spectrum. <laughs> the kids have been in the system a long time. We're really affected by it. <laughs> oh, my God. They're the slower ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the slower the shuffling, ones. <laughs> yeah. Shuffling zombies. Yeah, I don't know. That that's a really good question. Um, I don't. I don't know. Honestly, I just. It's just. I guess it just came to me. I don't know. I have no idea. I love so. it. I love it, man. I, I, Chad is the the one that I spiel all this to. I'm like, okay, you got to listen to this, and I'll explain it to him. This is why it's so freaking cool. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I listen to the word, Yeah, they're man. probably the greatest books ever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was. Thank you. I was just gonna say that, but uh, you know. Yeah, there's some guy in my mirror who tells me that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I found um, there's one one part of it that I th- it's probably the creepiest thing I've I've read in those not, probably not the creepiest but it's, it's so fucking creepy but the way you have the zombies run in line and oh yeah oh, my emergent behavior yeah, yeah. holy <laughs> shit that's so, dude. I'm telling you, I fuck. Oh god, I love it. I love it. It's, it's such a great idea. I just just to picture that how fucking freaked out you would be if you you're sitting around and you you have a preconception of what these beings are supposed to be like. Yeah, it's, yeah, right. And then you see them fucking all running in line and doing this weird shit. You're like, what the fuck are they doing? What is? Yeah, this? but do they oh. run in line to hide their numbers? No, they oh. uh, it's they kind of just imitate each other. Is, is where it comes from. And, and, and so the weird thing was that I, I was, uh, um, I used to write software for, uh, in my, my previous life. And, um, I was writing this piece of software once that was, uh, dealing with a bunch of, uh, intelligent, like, uh, uh, bots. And the idea behind it was that, um, collectively they were in, intelligent and could solve the problem, but individually they were fairly dumb, right? They're, they're very capable of solving only very simple problems. So I wound oh, up my. doing, a bit of reading on this emergent theory behavior. Um, And the idea was, you know, like for instance, if you look at it, if you observe an ant, for instance, you, you can't, you don't have any, you can't ever develop any concept of what a, a, a mound of ants or a bunch of ants are capable of. If you, by watching one ant, you know, you don't know that, um, well, for instance, they can build this complex uh, underground structure. You can't, you don't know that they can, um, some of them, I guess, can, can basically form little rafts and rotate through and float, bridges. float across. Yeah, and build bridges and all this, all this really crazy behavior. But these behaviors emerge from the collective rather than the individual. And you see it in, I guess, in you know species of birds and things like that. So I was really fascinated by that idea. And so I thought, wouldn't that Why be not? cool with my zombies? <laughs> <laughs> so basically the zombies are Borgs. Borgs? Yeah, kind of, yeah. I have mine. Yeah, that's right up your alley, Louise. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the thing, but there's a difference between having kind of a, a collective mind and, and being just kind of an individual part of the whole that I mean, because you're not really sharing thoughts, but you're still able to, beha- to, to, to function collectively. So it's, it's, okay. it's kind of, I don't know. 
I thought it was very interesting, very fascinating. So. It is. Absolutely, it is. Um, it, like I said, it's just such a weird image of seeing this. And just and the whole uh, hurting zombies, and you have these zombies that are smarter than your stupid zombies yeah. that run it, and they, they're able to get all the other zombies to do what they want, but you can't tell which one's fucking smart. Ah, it's, it's right. just... Uh, Love it, man. I can't tell. I, I told you I was going to geek out about it. Actually, I might. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> on my notes, I have to not geek out. Always, it always kind of made sense out. to me, you know, because it's like when you think of, you know, when everybody everybody at, at the office gets the flu, right? Some people are down for like a week. Some people are like, dude, I only had that yesterday. No, I'm cool. Right. You know, and, and even with drugs, right? It's like, hey, take this drug. It works great, but maybe it works great for you, but not for me. So it seems like all of these medical things affect your metabolism in a different way because we're all, you know, we're all we're unique, all sure. you know? So um, it just seemed to me that a zombie virus would affect everybody a little differently. So totally makes yeah. sense. Exactly. That's what, that's what I was saying. It's refreshing to me because I have a new view of this awesome genre that I love and you took it to like another level. That's why I, I enjoyed oh. every, I enjoyed every freaking book that, of that series. And, oh, uh, good. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wanted it to be, I mean, considering the fact that they're, well, they're basically zombies, but, you know, I wanted it to be as plausible as I could possibly make it, you know? So, so it wasn't really, you know, even, it wasn't people rising from the dead. It was people getting this virus and then having, you know, basically their, their lose a, a, um, a lot of their cognitive abilities <clears throat> and, and basically kind of devolve into these uh, various sets of behaviors. So they wanted to, like, so I wanted it to be as plausible as possible. So, because I, I think those kinds of things, those kinds of stories are the ones I enjoy the most. So that's why I like 28 days later. So oh, I love that movie. I love it. 28 weeks later. I like that one just as much. It's, oh, really? I mean, it was not as good as the first, but yeah, for what it is, it continued the story and I liked it. And it's just because they weren't just mindless. Well, they were mindless in the fact that they had one intent and it was to kill. Dude. And yeah. They weren't called zombies; they were called infected because that's what they yeah. do. It's a virus, and I like that idea. But it was still basically it's still considered a zombie movie because they have oh, one right, frame right. of mind. And I was like, I love it, and oh, I mean, yeah. the eyes bleeding red, and they, you know when they're infected or not, and it's like, oh shit! I'm, oh you, yeah, yeah, I love that movie. It scared the crap out of me the first time I saw oh, it. Oh my god, that yeah, first scene where he goes into that church and he's calling out, and the zombie just oh yeah, no looks kidding. up. <laughs> oh my god. Was, oh yeah, when the zombie looks at yeah, there's looks something up, about like, that, that right? Just so I don't know. He's he's like a bird, you know. He's like, "Fuck, what was that?" And yeah, fuck right? it. he's like, you know, better start running, buddy. Oh my god, that was amazing. Yeah, I love that stuff, man. Cool. And the road is the other one. Oh yeah, this is a if really you're feeling good, it's so depressing. Yeah, if you're feeling I know. down and depressed. Do not watch that. Oh will, yeah, no kidding. You will end it after watching. Oh my that. god. You're I, done. I convinced my wife to read it because I I love the book, but the I'm the book is great, right? Yeah. So I told my my wife, oh, honey, you have to read this. <laughs> she gets done with it. She's like, why the fuck would you have me read this book? This is so depressing. I I do. All oh, this, it is. It's, it's yeah. Oh my well, god. I, it's depressing, but it's like, well, that's almost reality. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, the thing about it is that I think the movie. One of the unusual things about the movie was that it captured that mood so perfectly. Because yeah. whether you read the book or or see the movie, you're just as suicidal afterwards. Oh yeah, seriously. Yeah, and it's just like, and what are you going to do? It was the filters they used because they muted all the colors. They made oh, it yeah. dull, and it was the the cinematography on it was awesome. Oh, and that's, that's absolutely. just because I mean the the camera guy he knew how to shoot the angles and get everything that they needed. And the filters I think is what did a lot for it because it just muted everything and made everything so dull and and not dark, but it was just like there's lack of any life. Because that's basically yeah. what that is. There's no life in any of this, any of the scenes, and being that there's no color bringing stuff to life. And they don't tell and I'm you. I'm a big color guy. I'm a big color guy because I, oh, yeah. you know, I color comic books, or I did for a minute. And oh, okay. I, I like to me a blank page or you know just a black and white lines is great, and it looks nice. But I put the color in it that actually makes it pop and come to life. Sure. That's how I look at it. Without color. Yeah everything's kind of dead and that's what that movie felt like everything around them was just dead and dying and they're just trudging on waiting for the day that they were going to die oh, yeah yeah right it's like they they know it but they they keep they keep going yeah you know? right it's inevitable but we're not just going to give up and that's i guess that's the one good thing about it is like never give up i guess but uh, unless <laughs> i know but that scene when he's telling his kid and how to go okay so you put the gun in your mouth 
you know oh, you yeah. pull the trigger oh, and you're like holy shit that is some dark yeah, no, kid, that's a dark place no, you gotta go there when you have to think all right i don't want my kid to suffer if i'm gone that might happen because it's happened to the whole world oh, right because he's kind of like going downhill the whole movie yeah. oh yeah you're just waiting for him to check out and call it good. oh yeah yeah, yeah. waiting for him to tap out go okay i'm done i'm out yeah you know one of the other things i really liked about it was that uh, um i think well, and you noticed it in the in the in the book more than the movie was the ambiguity of it. I think they refer to the the man as like the man, yeah, the boy, yeah, they don't, and they never talked about what exactly happened. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. yeah, there's all these unanswered questions, so all you really have to focus on is just their reaction to the situation and their relationship with each other. Yeah, God, it's a, such a great book. That's why I to me, and I like going into these stories and like I love weird documentaries and that people don't would necessarily say hey honey come on let's get some popcorn and watch people <laughs> jump from Lakers. yeah j- jump from the <laughs> golden gate bridge for a year and uh oh. yeah it's, it's called the bridge i watch this uh yeah there's just certain things you don't share man yeah exactly you just keep that oh, to you yourself it's like a documentary about people yeah jumping yeah it's called the bridge yeah they did a uh, uh they shot the bridge for a year and they do this. Are you serious? Yeah, and they show yeah. all these people you that people freaking jump, jump up right off the what? bridge. So I had heard about wow. it. Wow. Yeah, and I love it. Was a it was a great. It was actually a great documentary. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody that doesn't want to watch Especially people you feel like jumping off a bridge. The road and you're not quite sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Taking your as life a, yet. <laughs> as, a, as dessert. But you want to? You really want to get there? Yeah. If you want to see for real, you want to get there. Yeah. Uh, but one of the cooler, the cooler things that I saw on that particular documentary was a kid that had been planning this, and, and he's obsessed with the fact that he wants to die, and he wants he wants to jump from this from this bridge, and all this stuff. And he plans. He goes home, tells goodbye to his parents, gets his books, uh, gets rid of whatever, and goes to the bridge. And this is it. I'm doing it. And he grabs onto the bridge. Jumps off and he says, the second his fingers stopped touching the bridge, he knew he didn't want to die. Oh shit! Yep. Wait, as he's flying he through live? the air. Yeah, he lived. He lived. Okay, so, so he's telling. The, yeah, he's then. telling okay. the story how and they, he's like he broke his pelvis, his legs are broken. He's just, he's hitting concrete, That's but he. Up. Yeah, but and he's still somehow he's still walking. But this, this how far is it down to the water? Is it? Yeah, far enough that you're like pancake when you get down there. Yeah, most people I mean, die. Is it like, what, 200, 300 feet? Cat? It's the water tension that kills you. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's horrific. It's horrific. And, that you know, people get to that point. But I find that stuff fascinating. Again, not anything you want to ask your girlfriend to go watch with you, but it's still... <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I got a couple... Cat, cat's that'll, over here saying that'll be the last date. Yet. What's that? Well, that's interesting. That'll be your last like, date when you do that. Yeah. Cat and I were kicking around some ideas for this this kind of a semi post apocalyptic whatever sci fi thrillerish thing, and and I was kind of thinking, well, okay, so I I, I I like the idea of the world we're talking about, but then what you know what do what do your people in this world do? And one of them, one of the jobs I was thinking about was a suicide investigator, which fits in the world, but. But then I thought, Suicide. is that too bleak? Yeah. <laughs> oh my Not god! Post apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. In post apoc. Oh my god, that's hilarious. I think the reason I like post apocalyptic movies, and this is no joke, it was I'm 10, 12 years old when this movie came out, and my we're at my uncle's house, my mom and my aunt say, go down to the video store and get a movie. I'm like, okay, so me and my uncle go, and okay, that was a mistake right Bad there. Move. So he grabs me. Oh, and we, we talked about that story. <laughs> and we get down there, and I go, how about this one, Uncle Jack? And he goes, okay, it looks cool. So we grabbed it, come back home, put it in, and it's The Road Warrior. Oh. oh. Not really a Thanksgiving movie, but uh, it worked for me. It's great. I yeah, like it. Exactly. And that was my first, yeah. like, I guess, vision, the first envisioning of a post-apocalyptic world. And it's stuck with me since. And for whatever reason, I like to see how people, the fall of society and everything. And then I like to see how people look at it and go, okay, what would be rebuilt or how would it go about? I like all the different views on how everything happens. So, I mean, they say post-apocalyptic. And I'm like, well, I'm going to like it just because I want to see what someone else is is envisioning the world would be like. Yeah. 
And so, I mean, my second favorite one is Doomsday. 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 With Rod Mit- uh, not Rod Mitchell, but um, Malcolm McDowell's in it. It came out 2012. Never heard of it. What? what? Yeah, I don't think I've heard of it. Oh, oh man. Rico, I'm, I'm sad right now. No, I'm yeah, I sad. Like I know. I love, I, I love those. So I want to watch that. And really? I'm the same way. Uh, Cat, Google that one. What? Doomsday with Malcolm McDowell. That's, I loved uh, Stephen King's uh, The Stand in uh, Robert McCammon's uh, Swan Song. It's all about, the, I would be fascinated in just any, any, any old thing. I just want to see how the, like, like Chad said, I want to see how the world turned to shit. And I want to see, how, <laughs> how, and I want to see, yeah. and I want to see how people deal with it and how yeah. they survive. That's, you know, it's human nature. That's what we do. We have to, you know, keep going. It doesn't matter. Just put one foot in front of the other, man. But right, yeah. So what you're saying is these are actually um, kind of a uh, um, inspirational sure movies. Why not? Okay. It's Why not? Let's say it is. Um, figure out how I'm going to get to Montana when the shit hits the fan. <laughs> no, the, I'm, absolutely. Bobby thinks we're kidding, but it's like an hour. No, it's an We've hour. We got a plan. Already. We have a plan. We got a what, oh, 1500 acre ranch in Montana. We're heading to. Yeah. Oh no, kidding. Yeah. Oh yeah, family ranch. Yeah. Uh, he's so just like, been that's adopted like into the family. Six hour drive from where you are? Seven and a half. Uh, I've made it in well, without five. traffic? <laughs> it's not too I've bad. It with my dad. It's actually oh, okay. it's actually not too bad. Um only what here is probably the worst. But once you get uh over the pass you know, it's just a straight shot uh through ninety. And um yeah, we love it. And we have a at our at our home, my like I said before, my wife uh works in Seattle and we like had that discussion. I'm like, something happens. I'm grabbing the kids and I have highway two, which heads all the way down through Spokane, all the way down uh, to uh, Montana. And I'm like, I'm taking highway two and heading off. And she's like, okay, I'll grab my shits in the car. I my, you know, bug out bag in the car. And we, we meet oh, over cool. there. Okay. But it was weird because we have a 27 year old and I'm like, have I ever actually said those words to him too? If something were to happen and I'll go, Oh my God, we never told Tommy. We know what the fuck happened to him. Oh, so, like, I, I never liked that one anyway, so fuck him. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so I brought it up to him like, oh, Tommy, this is kind of a weird subject, right? But hang with me. If something ever happens, and he just looked at me and said, we go to Montana, right? And I'm like, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. You're good. That's what I was going to say. He's like, fuck you, dad. We're freaking up and fuck out of here. I'm going to Montana. I'm, oh, that's funny. Yeah. It's a... Uh, that's one of those things we sit, we have a ranch where we hang out um, every year. We have a pig roast, just to, it's freaking heaven. It's the best place in the world to, to me. And um, we'll sit around and we'll go, okay, zombie apocalypse. What do we do? And he's like, well, I'll sit up here and we'll start planning. He's like, oh, well, I'll sit up here and I can, and I kid you not, the ranch sits on the very bottom of this base. of the base of this mountain that's all behind the house and oh, everything okay. in front of it is flat so you see everything oh, wow. yeah everything around you except what's behind you and it's a freaking hill bears it yeah absolutely bears is the only thing you have bears, to worry about cougars, yeah, wolves, stuff like that yeah. we got it all out there elk deer oh it's yeah. amazing so like that's it, where i spent my summers milking cows and gardening and riding horses and getting beat by steve and mike that sounds like a blast. Yeah, I was getting beat up by my cousins too. Not so much Mike, but Steve a lot. <laughs> oh, fucking Steve. Rest in peace. So yes. anyway, so you, we think about all this stuff all the time, which is why your books, uh, you know, hit that chord. And um, I just, I can, again, I told you I was going to geek out about it. And um, I... <laughs> so when's the movie deal? Yeah. Seriously, man. Um. There was a, I don't know, uh, some company shopping it around Hollywood for a while, about a, gosh, about a year ago now. But um, I don't know, that nothing ever came of it. So um, so the rights are available is what you're saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Luis, <laughs> yeah, you got I, in your checking account. I'm script right here, man. <laughs> hey, it gives me a reason to fly to Texas. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Business trip. Wait till you see the freaking uh, electric racing car. Holy shit, dude. 
oh, dude, uh, it's like the real deal. Yeah, I looked it up. I read that and I went online. I'm like, this sounds, it's so specific. I'm like, this has to be for real. So I like forget when I lined and I found it, dude. Well, that Kat shit's for real. I'm sorry, what? Before you wrote it. I, let him finish talking. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh sorry, go ahead. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, uh, um, um, I think I started writing that part of the book when we were still in Denver. And uh, uh, cause a friend of mine had posted a video for that car on Facebook. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. That'd be like perfect, right? If you had some solar panels, you could charge the whole thing. And then, so the weird thing was we were shopping for a house in Austin. And then I, I watched a video about that guy who owns the car. And uh, um, it's like this really well done, probably 12, 15 minute video about him trying to like set the record, speed record it, at the Texas Mile. Um, and he gets for Chad who doesn't know he gets it to like 174 miles an hour in an electric Mustang. Electric oh, 68 <laughs> electric Mustang. Oh, dude, yeah, I know. So sick, I'm man. Insane. <laughs> anyway, so we we're watching this video, and then he's like, it shows him sitting at this this kind of little dive restaurant, like like a quarter mile from our house, the house we're looking at. And we're like, ah, oh, we know that place. And it turns out his shop is just up on the on the main road up here, like maybe a mile from the house. Yeah. You know, so um, Kat, because she can talk to anybody, she's one of those, you know, social people, just make friends with like everybody. Everybody in the grocery so, line. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so it's like we, we came down to do something and she's like, hey, let's go stop at Sandy's on Friday because he's going to be there because the car guys show up. And I'm like, oh, I don't, you know, this is, I'm kind of introvert, you know, I don't want to do that kind of stuff. So she drags me there and then she orders a burger and then, you know, she, we're, I think, in line and she goes, that's me, Joe. You know, like oh. like down on it. Anyway, so we 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 thankfully. Oh, she wants to like just go down and sit at the table or some shit. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> that's weird. That's really really weird. So we go outside and we have our lunch at a picnic table. And he comes outside and I guess he's leaving. And she says something like, "Mitch, I love you." Oh my god, or, I'm exaggerating. But and then his wife like, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Oh. I did. I did not say that. That was not where I did. <laughs> so it's good though. Either That's way, going in the book. It was kind of like she she found a way to kind of spark a conversation with him. And the next thing you know, he's sitting down with us, and we, we're talking for 30, 40 minutes. And then and then um, so we go we go to a shop later on, and at some point he took us for a ride in the car. And anyway, oh, so yeah, we, we stopped by awesome. the time. He's a really cool guy, but that car is so insanely fast. It is just you wouldn't even believe it. There's no, no noise. There's like no acceleration, right? You just go from. No, it's go. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's electric go. motors. You yeah, don't right. Have exactly. We were cruising. Go. Yeah. We were cruising on, on, on the highway up here. It's like, it's like, like a four way, not really highway. It's like a four way, four lane road sure. anyway. And he's probably going 40, 50 miles an hour. And he's like, <laughs> I'm going to punch it. And it's oh like, it's, it's like a rocket just takes off and just boom, you're gone. Oh, and it was just, it's, uh, it's like. I mean, no, no, no car or no, I guess, I don't know, ride you've ever been on at the carnival or anywhere can match it. Because it is just like, it is just crazy, crazy fast. So what do you well, do? So like, you well, put it in the well, Tesla your book. started out those, uh, those oh, exactly. motorcycles. Tesla, and I, when Tesla first came out, I mean, this is years ago, they showed a normal, I think it was a GSXR 1000, revving down the street and you can hear it coming. And it, it's like, you know, it picks it in the distance and you hear, and it passes the camera as loud as hell and it goes quiet again. And right behind him is a guy on an electric motorcycle. And I hear his, yeah. as he goes right by the camera. And I'm like, oh, shit. And they go, they were doing the same speed. Yeah. Yeah. I was well, like, that's oh, crazy, shit. I would love to get one of them electric bikes. But I'm sure they're, oh. shit, $40,000, $50,000. Oh, yeah, maybe. Maybe. But do you I really like want the Tesla cars, that much too. acceleration without, without a bunch of metal around you? <laughs> oh, you <yeah. know? laughs> Shit. <laughs> right? Don't punch it. Yeah, oh, no. You got to have a seatbelt on your bike to hold you on there. <laughs> that's bad yeah it's going by what, <laughs> what? No, what? Just a motorcycle just went by oh <laughs> uh, so, we, so motor transportation you have electric cars in the in the stories just the one electric car oh, that's cool yeah they kind of they kind of stumble on it uh um kind of stumble on it but uh, um yeah and then they use it for uh um is it two books i think mm -hmm. yeah yep. or um I forgot what happened to it. Holy crap! <laughs> I think they left it. They then they get they they left it. I think they get kidnapped or something. It's like well, uh, 
Yeah, because yeah. they took off in a helicopter from. Uh, from yeah, over there, that's I think. right. That's right. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So I was talking to Mitch about it one day, and uh, he was reading the books, and he got all upset because at some point in one of the books, um, they hit one of the whites, and it breaks the, his head, like breaks the windshield or something. And he was like, "Oh no, you <laughs> ruined my car! I couldn't read anymore." <laughs> <laughs> that's some love right there, man. You can't even read about you know make believe from makeup or, story yeah, of your car. Oh, yeah, that's right? great. Oh, so apparently he's working at a Lincoln, one of the old, uh, the oh old uh, mid '60s models with the suicide oh, door. The suicide door. Oh, yeah. I love those cars, man. Nice, the sexy as shit. So let me ask you this: when when you come up with like characters, and you're bringing, you're introducing them, have you already figured out when you're going to kill them? Do you make sometimes. up characters just to kill sometimes. off? Sometimes. God, that's fun. It, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Because sometimes, well. There's a story about my my former sister in law. Um, <laughs> you make her a character to kill her off. I was just gonna ask you, could you please what? kill Chad in your next book? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chad's a very killable name too. Yeah, see. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Thanks. But yeah, go. so the um, there was this my ex sister in law. Her name is Margaret, and uh, um, and we kind of have one of those love hate relationships. And uh, yeah, so I let's see. So far, I think I've killed her in six or seven books. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I, I threw her out of a blimp. I ran her over with Prius and dragged her down the street. She got eaten by a zombie, hacked it out with a machete, um, burned at the stake. Salem witch trials. Dude, I'm telling you, that's the last survivors. Yeah, we were, uh, we burned people. That was one of the things. They burned people all the time in that book. I know. Uh, that was, uh, I started reading that, that one as well. I haven't gotten as far into that one. Um, but I do again. It's a, it's a different style, exactly. a different style of writing than uh, than slow burn. So, yeah. you know, that was yeah, Piper it, Brook, right? We were just talking yeah, about it. Yeah, we Piper Brook wrote it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, when I saw the the cover for it, it said Piper Brook and Dare, and I go, Oh, is that his daughter? Is she getting into writing? Because <laughs> <laughs> I went to school with a girl named you know, Piper. That's funny. That's and I was funny like, Oh, because, yeah. When we first when we first put the 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 book up, it was only our last names, Piper Brook and then Adair. And that's what people were like, Dude, is that your sister? Is that your wife? What are your daughter? And I'm like, No. <laughs> so then we put the, the first names on there too. So and I was like, Oh shit, let's talk about this. How long has she been writing? Then I read the little card and I go, Oh no, it's T W Piper Brook. Okay, <laughs> that's stupid. My first initial look, I thought it was a girl, and I'm like, Uh. Oh, Jesus. Just because I knew a girl named Piper. <laughs> it could have been a girl. It just it. happens to not be a girl. This is my daughter, Woman. Piper. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Seriously. Everybody got cool to kill off in a bowl of K. <laughs> of course, a lot of my books are that way. It's like if... if I Well, I, I say that, but I think the highest mortality rate was a black virus. I think every named character but... Oh, but two. Every named character but two dies. See, Tarantino did. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, I guess so. I did. When Tarantino ain't afraid to kill off anybody. You don't care oh, how yeah. big a character they are in the story. I'll kill you off. Oh, yeah, so I guess so. I guess that's it. Usually usually or, a few more people live, but you know. Uh. <laughs> or, or you took a book from George R.R. R. Martin and just kill off every main character. That's going to happen. Oh, well, that's it, right? Because as, soon as, like yeah, as soon as you start to like somebody, you know they're going to get it. Yeah. You know? Oh, so, yeah. Uh, that guy's like, so okay. interesting. <laughs> Sean Bean. I mean, that guy can't stay alive in a goddamn production. He does. <laughs> Poor guy. I wonder every time they ask him to do a, a role, he's like, "In which part do I get me. killed? Could you please oh, right. point it out finally, to me?" Finally, he's like the good guy in a movie, right? right. He's, he's the, the only good guy. guy. He's killed. What? He's always the good guy? No, he's the only in, good in guy the, in Game, Game of Thrones. Everyone else saw. He's usually he's usually the bad guy, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. That's. What I think is. they said. I think there's only been like four or five movies he's done in his whole career that he hasn't died in. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. He always ends up dying. <laughs> Poor Boromir. Well, he dies at the island, doesn't he? He gets thrown off. Yes, he does. He gets thrown off yes, of that uh, catwalk. In what? The island. Yeah. It's yes. uh, got Ewan McGregor and Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Totally. Yeah, he dies. Um, he dies in the Black Hand, or what is it? Black Death. Was it he? During the, the bubonic plague. Yeah, the bubonic plague. Oh, does he die he in that Black one? Black Death. He dies. Yeah, I forgot. About, I was trying to remember when, you, when we brought that up. I was like, did he die in that movie? I don't remember. So, he dies in Game of Thrones. He dies in, uh, I think, Patriot Die Hard. Games. Was he in the Patriot Die Hard? Game. The yeah. Way back in the day. Uh, he also died in The Hobbit or uh, Lord of the Rings. Oh, you're Fellowship right. Fellowship of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Fellowship of the Rings, yeah. 
So yeah, he, he dies in a lot of his, a lot of his movies. Poor guy. He, he was in a TV He's... show on TNT called Legends about him being a spy, and they create different legends, which is personalities to go undercover oh. with. And he didn't die, but um, that's TV show. But they so killed the show. They couldn't. But really they killed the show. <laughs> so there you go. So there you go. <laughs> His whole then, just died. Yeah, they Poor found guy. a loophole. They're gonna kill Sean Bean. You know what? For, kill the whole show. for being that unpleasant, I still he's making good money dying in, in good movies. So and the thing is, Sean Bean's a good actor. He yeah. really is. Yeah. He really is. I don't know why they always got to kill him off. I'm a little I'm a little sad by it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what uh, what made you go into a uh, military space story uh, like uh, your new uh, Freedom's Fire. How did that? How did I come about? How did you decide to go into uh, sci-fi? Oh, she gave me hints. She says my first book was sci-fi. No. Yeah, I actually wrote a book called Ace Gonzo. Oh, I'm sorry, um, I haven't. Back in God. No, I wrote it in probably 1997. Oh wow! And then um, I published. It was a, it was the first book I actually self published um, mm-hmm. in 2012, I think. But uh, and it sold like well, like twelve copies or some shit, and uh, um, I eventually pulled it off because I was like kind of embarrassed by it. But I mean, at the time when I wrote it, I was like, "Dude, this is great!" Yeah, of course, this stuff. <laughs> but you know, um, as you become a better writer, as I hope I did over time, I would I just thought, ah, I can't really do that book up there. It's just not very good. So I always kind of had a passion for that sort of thing, you know. And, and um, so I, I don't know. I guess I just decided to write one. <laughs> It's you know it's very good. I I am I mean I'm oh, definitely you. enjoying it. I don't want to spoil it. So I've been thinking about this for the last three days because I wanted to bring up the book. Obviously, we want you to you know talk about it as much as you can. Oh, we'll just say okay. Anybody who hadn't read it, spoiler alert. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. Turn off now. I I loved probably one of my favorite, and I love when books do this. That you're in it immediately. You have they don't tell you, hey, this is what happened. And set it up for you. You're like, this guy is, you know, this is his life. And you're, he goes off to, you know, gets recruited and he's going to go do, yeah. you know what I mean? And you're immediately, it's like the action starts. You, you start thinking, okay, what what's going on with these grays and, and yeah. all, the, all this other stuff. And very, very cool. And um, I'm up to the point where, again, spoiler alert, if you're listening to this and still don't, please don't complain <laughs> at me. Okay. Um there are spaceships. Yeah, yeah. There, is, <laughs> there are spaceships and aliens and stuff. Uh, the anyway, the 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 whole ramming uh, spaceship. It was such a great oh, great okay. idea. I I kind of find that very interesting and and <laughs> it, it's just just such a great great well, story, the, man. The thing is, that's one of the things that kind of pissed me off actually. Because I I the thing is I I've been working on that book on when I say working on it. Uh, um, um, so I think my, the, the book I released before this was, uh, last July, you know, so this book came out in, in like earlier in May. Right. So, um, I wrote those parts about the ships ramming each other like last year sometime. So the thing is when I went to see the last star Wars movie, oh. one of those little fucking ships ram uh, an Imperial cruiser fucking and I was like Wars. fucking pissed. <laughs> I was like, you bastards, you stole my idea. Well, of course, just had the, had the same idea, but got it out way ahead of me, yeah. right? And I was like, now it's going to look like I totally fucking ripped him off. Mm. Well, of course, my ship's, it's a it's a whole yeah. different kind of, it's not really, well, anyway. In Star Wars, one kind of acts like a tugboat that, and, you know, obviously pushes the Imperial Cruiser, right? Mm-hmm. But in mine, they just kind of flat out ram it. But anyway, but I was just like, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what though yours is cooler man I, what happens that whole scene when they break in there the whole uh, uh, the whole relationship that the main character I can't think of his name now the main character has with all these people and he doesn't know Dylan yes Dylan. yeah Dylan and I want to call him Zed <laughs> I know I almost did too thank you nine Zed thank you I was like oh my god uh, Chad if you don't know this Mom, I can't. I don't want to get into it. It's just, it's just great. He doesn't know who's with him and who is not. And oh, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and he's like, he's got to do it, and he's just got, he's just being badass. And everybody that's 
you know, around him sees it as such and just follow him. Okay, this guy and everybody, you know, uh, human humans are now slaves to this race of uh, space uh, aliens. And, little, those little gray fuckers. You know, those gray fuckers. Yeah, and uh, it's just I find that shit fascinating, man. Again, you had me again. You have me again. So thank you. Oh, well, cool then. Yeah, you know, and, and one of the things about that about that book that I, I um. Because did you did you I guess you haven't read the prequel yet. So no. there's a if you when you get to the book there's a link to should I hit the mic again? But there's a link um, to go out to my website and get like a little. Uh, how long is the prequel? Anyway, there's a it's probably fifteen thousand word prequel. Um, Twenty thousand. Anyway, so let's just say it's a prequel. But yeah, that's twenty twenty one point three actually. Yeah, I know she's like Miss Fact Checker too. She's like, you fucker, you got that wrong. I said it exactly like that. <laughs> You said nine. Never mind. Oh, anyway, <laughs> but uh, um, it talks about the story of how Earth um, came to be enslaved by these grays. And and originally, that's where I wanted to start the book. And uh, but I just couldn't quite. I don't know. I get so. So what happens is, is this to, to completely give the spoiler away. Right. <laughs> um, is that basically this this ship of of just 18 of these little skinny gray alien guys like you see everywhere else, right? They have the big heads. They land on the moon and uh, basically build some rail guns and just bombard the Earth and say, okay, we can we can fuck you up until you're we're all dead. Yeah. Or you can just surrender, you know? Because it's like when you when I'm thinking alien invasion, what do aliens really need to do? They just really need to show up and drop rocks on us, right? Yep. You know? Because mm-hmm. there's not really anything we can do about mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So you don't need a whole giant alien army to conquer the world. You just need a couple guys with 18. A, a couple rocks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> with a, like a, a modern catapult, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, um, so that wound up in the prequel because once I, I kind of – I guess had you know my little personal genius idea. I thought, well, then where do you go with that? You know, because once they once they've done that, then what do you do? You just have people going, Ugh. yeah, nothing to do now. It's <laughs> yeah. funny, right? Yeah. So anyway, that's when. So then the 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 book the the first book in the series then actually picks up with with that that situation thirty years later. The Greys have kind of taken over. There's a gazillion of those little fuckers around now, and uh, um, you know they're running a show, and now they're involved in the secondary the second war. Right. So um, that's where it picks up, and so it's kind of a, a combination of we've got to we've got to fight this war, but we we still want to have this revolution and you know shirk off the yoke of our slavery. Right. So because there's another alien race that comes into play. So now yeah. the Greys have us humans as their fodder. You know, they, they just throw us out there to rest like soldiers. Rest soldiers. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. I, I just man, I really loved it, and. Uh, I wish. Cool. Yeah, I did. I did not gamble. I was in Vegas and I didn't gamble all day yesterday reading your book. I'm like, I got it. Oh, really? Yeah, totally. so, save some money. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife says, thank you, uh, basically. Oh, yeah, because all you have to do is go to when you go to Vegas, when you say, I'm going to win big with this pile of money I have is look around the size of those casinos yeah. and say, Mm-mm. no, no. Yeah, like I'm really going to win. Yeah. <laughs> Because my hotel cost me nineteen dollars, dinner was four bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just dropped. But they still do this for free. You know. <laughs> yeah, they still give it. A, you stay for free. Don't worry about it. You save so yeah, much right. money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're saving you money to spend on the tables. Oh yeah, yeah, See? yeah. So uh, let me ask you a question, Bobby. When when it comes down to it, which do you think was a better movie, The Omega Man or I Am Legend? Oh, oh that's going Jesus. deep. Jesus. I remember you know, seeing the Omega Man when I was like maybe eight years old. Yeah, I thought when I saw it too. And I'm like, that movie was so Charlton Heston, all badass and everything. Oh yeah, but yeah. I'm kind of torn. I like them both. I I I think the uh, um, yeah, I like them both. I, I like them both a lot. I um, I really like the new one, but I at the time when the the first one came out, the Omega Man, that was oh. like the best movie ever. I think that might have. I'm trying to think of one. It, would that have been my first really po- – I, I, I would I, I want to say it was my first post-apocalyptic movie. But the truth is before that, you know, I was – post-apocalyptic was a bit different because it was always, right. um, you know, here's Godzilla coming to destroy the, you know, right. the world. And here's, here's the giant grasshoppers coming to destroy the world. You know, <laughs> giant moths. Yeah, you name it. You know, you name it, right? Or giant so, insects, um, you know, giant ants get radiated and now they're killer ants from – you know, Santa Fe, oh, right, or wherever the right. fuck they every, are. Right, every movie you watched back then, all these black Giant and white spiders. movies, like, 
There you yeah. go. Just go through the through the whole insect arachnid. world. Yeah. Yeah. Just go insect to the insect world, world yeah. they all radiated. And, so know, what? Killing towns. What do you think happened that between then and now? That you would watch one of those movies back then. Like people watched King Kong in the 30s when it came out and shit their pants because it was so scary. And now you watch it and it's, you know, looks like dog shit. But well, it's, it was, a, but it's it at the time, internet. you know what I mean? It was the thing, it was new at the time. That's so it's why. Right? It, it, right. So, I mean, when I first saw, say, The Omega Man or Road Warrior, I thought they were great because that was the threshold of movie making and how stories looked and the special effects and everything oh, that yeah, was yeah. at the time and we've just progressively gotten better and now it's all cgi to make it look 10 times more real than it ever would be and i think that's why some of the movies are getting away from it like the road there's not a ton of special effects in that there's no cgi oh, right. that's just right. good storytelling that's yeah, what it's absolutely. all based on in acting and sometimes you come across a movie like that but then there's other times you get great movies that with special effects and everything it's just the i am legend i think they the way they portrayed the infected were, I thought it was amazing, but that's Oh, just I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. They, they had the, the one guy, the one main infected had cognitive abilities and could learn and everything. Whereas in the Omega man, they didn't lose any of their intelligence. They were just, couldn't they were be just out. Of they were vampires. Ones. Yeah. They're creepy as pale shit and creepy as fuck. Yeah. They were just vampires yeah. basically. And it's Charles which is, Hester, how which is, not like I that? mean, when you go back to the book, that's basically what they were in the, with the, what they were in the book. They were right. basically vampires. And so I, I mean, the way they did the the Will Smith version, I don't think is horrible. I, no, I, I like it, but I know that a lot of people, a lot of people don't. Didn't like it because the main character <laughs> should be white. He's not a black guy. That doesn't matter, honestly. It, it that's just yeah. a dude living by himself. It doesn't matter. It could have been a short little Mexican. It could have been an Asian. I, it, don't, it wouldn't matter to me. I yeah. mean, Glenn from Walking Dead would have been perfect for it. Stephen Yeun. Yeah, you know when they killed Glenn? I got to tell you, oh. I, I was like, I, I don't know. I, I was like, I'm not sure I can finish watching the series anymore. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Actually, when they killed him, I was pissed. But then I'm watching it with my son, and he's 15, so I'm not a horrible parent. Yeah. Um, he goes, honestly, Dad, you remind me of Negan. And I'm like, That's, I don't know whether it's wow. Slap you. Wow. And he goes, See, you know what I'm saying? You know, Negan's always saying, I will shut that shit down. Yeah, exactly. As soon as he said that, as soon as Negan said that first time, Noah looked at me and goes, How did you say? I go, I do say that all the time, damn it. Hey, Dad, you, you, know, you know Hitler, right? Dad, Hitler, you, you kind of remind me of him. I think it's the mustache. <laughs> Dude, that's fucked up, man. <laughs> no, but the, honestly, I I want to dislike Negan, but I can't. I mean, the character, well, the way like he's being... That guy. He's, he, he does a good job with it. Jeffrey Dean Morgan, I mean, the guy's putting so much charisma him. in everything. You want to follow Negan because yeah. he's such a good showman, and he's a salesman. Have you read he the books, though? Have you, fun. have you read the, oh, right. the comic books? Oh, hell no, dude. Those, okay. I'm so, I can catch up to read those. So Negan is like maybe twice the size of uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan... Um, right. but I think he's not as menacing as I saw him in the book. And I, man, a uh, year and a half ago, I was going to Ireland, uh, to meet my wife there for work. And I took all the oh, walking dead, mm-hmm. all the walking dead uh, graphic novels. So I'm, I'm reading all of those issues of that. What just happened in the last season. And uh-huh. I'm reading this and Bobby, I am telling you the panel where they show you, uh, him bashing his freaking head in it is okay. the most disturbing thing i've ever seen in my life oh, no and it was so out of fucking left field and dude i like i stood up and i'm like oh god and it's, of course i'm in the middle of a fucking plane who knows what the fuck i'm doing sky I'm like, marshals are coming after him yeah, right? what that's yeah, drawn like, oh, oh my god is this an american airlines flight no virgin i now think you got beat. yeah sir <laughs> Spanish guy over there, please. Don't make us throw you <laughs> the fucking plane. <laughs> oh, seriously though. Yeah, I I think people just shit on Walking Dead so much. I think they've done a great it's still on TV. And well, it's the way better than I shit on it show, is because yeah. Kirkman started to pull what I call a Lucas. Where you started fucking up your own properties, George Lucas. 
You did okay. that. Knock it the fuck off. You got away with a great movie called Star Wars. You got away with it. All right. You're, you're not the greatest director. You're not even the greatest writer. So Empire Strikes Back to me is the best. Just because you know, it's I agree. everything. I agree. That was the best movie. And I, and I he, love, love Star Wars. Well, hell, I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt. That's right. I oh, love the first I got my Wars. Boba Fett shirt on. Woo. Oh, there we go then. But yeah, I thought I thought The Empire Strikes Back was the best of the series. And, I mean, I'm, I didn't fall in love with Force Awakens. I've watched it a couple of times because I will. Rogue One, I've watched multiple times because it's a decent story. I mean, it just shows you. It's just a filler. I mean, well, let the naysayers be naysayers. Fuck them. Um, but he, Kirkman started fucking up his own property because he was killing off characters and having characters live that were no longer in the story within the first year of the story. The first year of the TV show, they started following along the first couple, three, four episodes, and then the writers started taking people away and killing people off or bringing people in that Daryl doesn't have a brother in the, in the comics. Daryl is not in. in the comics. I thought Daryl was in the comics. He Darryl, shows up later. Daryl is not in the comics at all. I thought Daryl showed up like two, three years into the comic that they found Daryl or whatever. Nope. All right, so they bring a new character in. Well, see, Kirkman started screwing with his own thing. And he already had a fan following, so why would you start doing that? That's why people started shitting on it. Oh, you have it, it because written. Because the fans were getting pissed. You have everything there on paper. You don't have to do you have everything to it. And it's already, it's already popular. Yeah, but let's, I mean, let's face it. The thing is, I think that a, a, a book or a graphic novel and a movie, they're, 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 uh, it's going to seem obvious right but they're different things but i think people sure. are entertained in a different way depending on which medium they're in and i think sure. what works in a graphic no novel not? might not necessarily work in a movie or even a regular book sure you know, or even so. a tv show even though it's a serialized and it's going multiple seasons or whatever it's still not yeah. going to play out you're getting the long version whereas with a movie you get the condensed version they're taking yeah, the reader, the reader's yeah. digest version but you know what right. yeah. What I heard, um, which I wish somebody would do this, and it's a, it saddens me to hear that Stephen King's not doing this, but they had, they were talking about you know the Dark Tower uh, movie that's coming out. Yeah. That's seven yeah. books. That trailer's awesome. That's seven books. Yeah. And they were going to do the main story, have a movie come out, and then throughout the fall, they would have a TV show. And then the next year, the next movie comes out, and then the TV show in between to – to tie everything oh, up. Really? Yeah. That'd be interesting. Right? Yeah. And because uh, part of those books goes back in time to when uh, the main character was a, a, a young person. And they could okay. do that. And they do. And they tie it all oh. together. Yeah. And that would be cool. Yeah. I think uh, Rob Reiner was supposed to be, uh, uh, you know, helming the the movies. And I don't know what happened. And I just such a great hmm. idea. But I thinking about it, that would make it. You watch these movies, and they just try to shove everything into two hours, and every fan complains about it because obviously you don't know. Hey, I don't know what Roland's thinking. You know, uh, he would think of it this way, right. yeah. but you can't do that. You know, unless you're dubbing. You know, him talking. Well, that's the time when I thought, God damn it, <laughs> why is there no deodorant okay. in this world? So you know, it's. It's a weird. So people complain about all this stuff, but I thought that it was a great idea to have it in a TV show to tie everything together. You get to know your characters a little more, know where they're coming from, and um, and I hope they do. They haven't said whether or not they're doing it, uh, but I'm assuming they're not because they're fucking morons and they, <laughs> they don't do anything. They how they're supposed to do what to. Disney's doing with Marvel, with Marvel's Agent of Shield, and yeah, true. There all you the go. Netflix exactly. Stuff. I mean, the Netflix are going to tie together and become the Defenders. All of those four main characters. And then they will tie together into the Marvel Cinematic Universe to the Infinity Wars. That's so you, awesome. And then yeah. Shield is going to come in in the Infinity Wars. And so you've got three different mediums. You got Netflix streaming, TV, and movies all coming together into one world. But you're, everyone's seen them from three different, I guess, ways to consume it. Yeah, it's brilliant. Ooh. It's like a great it. idea. It's working well for them. I wish. Yeah. DC. Get their shit get their together. Shit together. I heard Wonder Woman was amazing. I haven't watched it. My my kids watched I, it. I've heard it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. that's what I, they say. That is the best DC hero movie. Uh, people have, you know, raving so about it's the it. best of the three. Are we not counting Green Lantern? Dude, we no, we don't talk about that. <laughs> I can't even say that. Okay. A straight face. <laughs> Doesn't Deadpool? 
uh, oh, reference that. Ryan, Re- Ryan Reynolds makes yeah, fun of it. Can yeah, you make? Can that. you make? If you made me a superhero, can you make this? Can you not put me in spandex or make oh, yeah, the suit I'm green? Not green. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, I was shit. I was sold on that movie like halfway through the credits. I was like, this is oh, already oh. my favorite movie, you know. Directed by some asshat. Oh yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> just giving everyone. They're not even naming people. They're just giving them <laughs> bullshit. Like, oh, I'm this little prick, and it's like, holy shit, dude! I'm already on board. I'm I not even it. five minutes oh, in. Yeah. I love yeah. it, uh, and yeah. I can't wait for two to come out. They're bringing in Cable, and I'm happy as hell with that. Yeah, it should be a good movie. Yeah. But Josh Brolin, fingers crossed. Is cable. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Josh Brolin is Cable though. He's, He's a good also playing Thanos. Yeah, true, but he doesn't look doesn't look like him. I like him. Yeah, me too. I like oh, I like him too. But is that so him people, uh, on that fucking commercial me. that he what? looks like Evil Can Evil? He's racing death. Isn't that Brolin? You ever never seen this episode? There's like this guy is running like a marathon, and is the he looks just like Evil Can Evil. He's got stars, and I swear to God, it's Josh Brolin. And, I don't know what the then, hell you're talking no, about. No, you never I, I seen this either. commercial. No? Oh, God. Okay, I'm the only one that watched it. Did you smoke any of that legal weed before you started this? Listen, Listen sir. <laughs> He's hitting that LA. It's legal in Washington. <laughs> it's legal <laughs> here. There's nothing wrong with it. Anyway, sorry. sorry. I, yeah. Do all the conversation. Okay. Uh, they, yeah, anyway, there's just some weird commercial, and it looks like him. I'm like, well, Jesus, why is he doing like a, you know, oh, a it's church a commercial. commercial? Yeah. Yeah, see, I didn't even know what you were talking about. So, uh, I mean, like, I thought it was a movie you were talking about, dude. I'm yeah, I, I, I said commercial, I mumble. Well, it's the accent. <laughs> I think it's the accent that got me. I told you. I told you. It catches me off every so often. Uh huh. Oh, that's right. You're. Yeah. you're I'm white. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're not. You're not white. So what did you? White, what did not. you think about the Hobbit movie? Or the I, uh, Hobbit movies? I didn't like them. I'm so. You did. I you, did not. Did you say you did like them? I did not like them. Uh, yeah, I. Didn't. I don't know right? how Peter okay. Jackson took okay. a, a one. Book. I mean, it's only Small, what, 300 book. pages. It's one yeah, yeah, yeah one book. book and make it into a nine and a half hour movie. Mm. Oh, yeah. just drawing that shit out, out sir. Yeah. Let it go. Finish it up. Get it over with. Dude, right. watching the first Lord of the Rings movies was a life experience. That was. Oh, those were phenomenal. Uh, seriously, phenomenal. Yes. And so, so did I. Cat says she slept through the Hobbit. So. Oh. And I, and I almost lost my nerd card because, I mean, they were coming around. They were checking for people sleeping. And they were like, dude, you are no <laughs> longer a nerd. I had to give up. A, I, this is a new Star Wars shirt. I had to give it up. They took it right there on the spot. See, that's, why, that's why I got a Star Trek tattoo. So I can always, you know, peel that off. Hey, sir. Oh, see, well, sir, if you didn't have it then, they would have uh, removed the tattoo. Oh, they were hard. Get off with a razor. Yeah, yeah. With a that was phaser. It. <laughs> no <laughs> razor, not oh, phaser. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you said, dumbass. Here's your phaser. Set it to skin. <laughs> yeah, set it to skin. <laughs> Thank you. They told you. What? Dude? Come on. Uh, oh man. Me. Man, Shrek thank you. Nerd. This has been fun, man. Thank you for coming on the show, man. I guess uh, anything you want to plug in, you want to plug uh, website, books. Email. Go buy Freedom's Fire. Yeah, right Plug away. Freedom's people, Fire. People, people say it's a good book. <laughs> yeah, some reeking guy started <laughs> bothering me about it. We need to get Bobby and Mark on the show at the same time, all four of us. Oh yeah, totally. I would do that. Yeah, Tufo. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Me and Tufo, we've never. I mean, we've 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 we. I would say we talk a bit, you mm-hmm. know, through either uh, Facebook Messenger or email and stuff, but. I don't have he and I ever had an actual phone talk conversation. I think I was on a, on a show with him and him and God. I don't even know. I'm getting old. I forget. But yeah. So <laughs> some other guy. Yeah. George R. Martin. Oh, so it's like well, I when I went it. down to when I went down to Texas and on May 5th, I called a buddy of mine that lives in De- in uh, what is that McKinney, right out there outside of Dallas, yeah. and he's all, I'm gonna I'm gonna be down in Dallas, dude. He goes, well, hit me up. I've known the guy eight years. I've never met him in person. I met oh, yeah. him gaming online, and yeah. that was eight years ago, almost nine now, and we finally just met a couple of weeks back. Oh, yeah. And well, I'm on, like, that, uh, on that Piper Book book, uh, I think we'd written three books before we actually met in person. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's great. So, I don't know how I do that. <laughs> it's, it's, so, a yeah, new, it's, it's a new age. It's the world we live in, right? Yeah. yeah, it's just the world we live in now, you know? Like I said, you yeah. have this eight-year relationship with a guy. Well, eight year relationship with a guy. That's I guess kind I of dirty. <laughs> 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 Shut up, Rico. Hey, you're the one. I'll get you deported. I will get you deported, Rico. 
<laughs> Fuck your nerd card. I'm yanking your green card. <laughs> Just don't tell Trump, please. Oh Jesus. He doesn't he doesn't realize about well, what on. I got a phone oh, call Jesus. coming in. Hey. Be President Trump. You can't put you can pull a, a wall around Puerto Rico. <laughs> it doesn't work. Puerto Rico is part of the U.S. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You got somebody, um, sir, uh, Mr. President. We're gonna have to uh, deport you. What? Sorry. Puerto Rico. Oh, uh, Mr. All President. Right. Uh, <laughs> You're right. You just gotta go home. Yeah, why don't okay. Take off on a vacation anyway. So you know, hey, <laughs> that's a big deal. Oh man. Yeah, so many people don't know that that Puerto Rico is basically part of the U.S. It's the 51st state. And it should be just eight. I mean, it's, it's, it's like Puerto like, Rico says, no, fuck that. We want nothing to do with you guys. You're fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, well, you know. Oh, and the other funny thing is, I was informed when I was down in Texas, Texas isn't even a state. What? It's a republic. Okay. It's a state. That's it's why they want state. to succeed from the union. Yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good luck with that. Exactly. Yeah, Alaska. And... Seemed, like, seemed like some guys tried that once. It didn't work out yeah, well. Right? The whole West Coast wants to do it too. <laughs> yeah, I think you know. Canada. I think when Texas joined the union, there was some kind of, and I don't know the. I. They retained their secession yeah. rights at some point, but I, I don't know. I think at some point it got voided or something. But I think that's what's still still, expired. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's what it's because they retained secession rights that they're considered a republic, not a state, at that time. Yeah. So, oh, but, but I'm were, sure they'll take they that federal funding. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> Free money? Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, but they, but, but it's, f- it's so funny because Puerto Rico turned it down and they're freaking bankrupt. It's Did they really just, turn it down? Yeah, well, yeah, they don't. They, it has to go state. Since I didn't. was a, since I was a kid, um, I I lived there till I was fourteen. I that has been in the you know in the general knowledge. It's like we could be a state if we want to. This is the thing, and every four years they you know we elect the governor. And that's the thing. You elect the governor. He's like, what are you going to do? Are you going to try? And he asks everyone. It's like, you guys want to become a state? And everybody's like, nah, we're good. So, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're all right. So is, there, after- is there an advantage to not being a state? I mean, Apparently like, not, because again, or did or? I mention we're fucking bankrupt? There's like no, there's well, so, I know that yeah, like seventy four billion in debt or something. Oh, it's amazing. It's but and it's all just stupidity. I think it would be a, a great advantage to the island to become a state, but you know whatever i don't it's cool but and i i obviously i love my heart's there um it's a beautiful place but you got just about as far away from Puerto Rico. i'm trying i'm trying next step's fucking japan <laughs> right yeah. actually next step would be hawaii, hawaii i know yeah. oh, you're right right yeah. uh, are you good or another one samoa right they're even farther away right yeah. they're, uh, uh, they're a territory yeah you feel like yeah so yeah, maybe they don't pay as much taxes. Uh, or more. Maybe that's why they don't do it. Yeah, it's Does a, it not pay federal tax down there. I don't believe so. I don't think they we pay. Yeah, we don't pay state taxes because we're not a state, um, but we do pay income taxes. It's just a weird, yeah, and I don't the, know. Again, I, to, right? I we're uh, Commonwealth. We're Commonwealth. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm gonna have to get on Wikipedia now. I'm all curious yeah. about this shit. <laughs> I know, and you're talking to somebody that left when he was 14 and a half years old that didn't know much you about had other things on your po- mind. Yeah, and you were like, exactly. You know, Politics girl. and fucking yeah, economics. Boys. Exactly. Boys. Yeah, whatever. You know. Hey, <laughs> hey, I'm not judging. I'm still friends with him. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Dude, double your chances. Hell yeah. Why not? <laughs> Roll the dice. <laughs> You don't know what's going to happen tonight. Oh, great. Uh-huh. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's my heckler. All the heckler. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Well, uh-huh. she's the fact checker. She's your producer. Dude, she, she's a lot of things. She's like the jack of all trades in our in our home. <laughs> when we need some extra rent money, I put her down on the South Congress. And, oh, oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dude, you're going to get your ass kicked, man. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. I'm his construction advisor, so. Ah, there you name it, she can do it. Oh, I see. So he puts her down in that street, but Seven it's not what you think. It's shit. construction. <laughs> we went oh, yeah, there. she's got it. Like, I don't know. Construction, advertising, a master's in business. She's like, you know, one of those people who's like, oh, you just got a bunch of degrees. Oh, you know, God. whatever. Yeah. A bunch of letters after my name, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Wallpaper the wall with all the certificates and everything. Oh, yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. 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 Me and my GED over here. We're like, <laughs> yeah. did you actually get one? Hey, hey. 
Yes, just because just because you wrote GED on the paper don't mean it's a GED. <laughs> I know. I just stood in the middle of downtown Buffalo and I declare I'm a graduate. That's how you do it, right? I totally it's shit. A... I didn't get my diploma until eight years after I graduated because I didn't turn in a goddamn textbook. Jeez, oh, seriously? <laughs> I technically hadn't graduated. That's oh, Chad. So I lied on all my applications for work. It says, "Are you graduate high school graduate?" Yeah. Yeah. No. In theory. Not. In theory. <laughs> No. Wow. Finally, my mom went down there and goes, you might, can we just go ahead and get that now? And they're like, sure, here. Well, the, the late charges on the book. Oh, it's <laughs> astronomical. <laughs> it's an expensive fucking book. Like $14,000. Yeah, $14,000. Yeah, it's a, it's a shitty book, too. It wasn't even that good. It wasn't even that good. No. <laughs> All right. Shitty, shitty class, anyway. Uh, right. Well, again, thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, I hope to have you now on again. Pop, pop. What's that? Pup Pup was playing the guitar. Oh yeah, it. he's a he wants he wants something to eat. He's a, he's been over here bothering Good me. Day. So he he plays a song whenever he wants to. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> little beat. Yeah, he's, he's a talent. Yeah, he's a talent. Let yeah. it be. I hear you. My, <laughs> <laughs> my dog does the same thing. It's awesome. like Simon and Garfield. <laughs> All right. I guess it's Bill. Sorry. <laughs> oh man, dude, it's been a blast. Holy crap! Thank you for coming yeah, on. Thanks and, for coming uh, on, man. Absolutely. Oh, Kat says when you come to town, look us up. Absolutely. Oh. Hey, same to you. Well, if you guys ever come to uh, Seattle, I would love to take you around and show you where people throw fish across the across the way. Oh, we've been there. We've, oh, yeah, yeah? we've been to the fish place. place. Kat got hit with uh, the fish. There. Yeah. See, <laughs> we can make that. I'm joking. We can make that happen again. <laughs> I might be down in Austin sometime soon. Because so, we got a job site down there that I have to go and take care of. Well. Yeah, it's a man. I'll hook you up. Always a pleasure. Where our, you know, our doors are open. But, uh, and thank you again for being so gracious and coming into our, our little tiny no show problem, and, uh, it. and talking to us. And again, a huge fan. And you just made my life by coming on and just talking to me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna save this on my computer and watch it every night. No, no, I'm just kidding. I need uh, apologize, I swear. My ego. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, check him out, bobbyadir.com, and uh, same in uh, Facebook. Hey, oh, I was going to ask you, uh, Instagram. Are you on Instagram at all? I found Bobby Adir author I don't know. on Maybe. Instagram, but I don't know if it was you. There was yeah, no I think posting. I have an account. I, I have a Twitter account I never use. I have an Instagram, Instagram account I never use. Cause, okay, so that is. Because there's, there's a, oh, gray hair and stuff. I don't fucking know how to use that shit. I, I don't know. Say that. That's no excuse, Bobby, sir. If you have a social media manager, make yeah. her earn her money. Yeah, seriously. Well, you know, oh, oh, yes. When you say make her earn her money, apparently. No, <laughs> Here we go again. I use a different definition of that. Oh my god, uh, apparently uh, because she hasn't been on social media. Oh dear lord, <laughs> is that Craigslist? You're talking about let Craigslist? Me go, let me look that up on Wikipedia yeah. and make sure I understand. Oh my god, yeah, we're not saying go to Craigslist or anything under yeah. you know <laughs> searching. Oh. So Instagram, huh? So yeah, so I have a. I'll, I'll make her earn her money, and then um, on Facebook, we have a presence there. We do most. We I don't know. We have like ten thousand likers or something on the page, and and I try to keep up with people there uh, as best I can. But sometimes I do get I get kind of off my own little world. I kind of forget about them. So now I just have to get go back on and apologize. And say, hey, sorry, I've been talking to anybody in like three weeks, but you know, here I am. I've been so, writing the next greatest novel. So just yeah, settle bear with me. Settle down. When I say that they go, yeah, sure, oh. but whatever. <laughs> well again thank you so much for coming on man and uh hopefully we'll have you uh sometime soon again and um we'll see you around man yeah. so thank Grab you so much we'll man. Do it together that'll be fun all right take oh, care. yeah i'd love to have you both on that'd be great yeah all right. the, the audible yeah for sure all right guys and thank edibles you. no we're not gonna do edibles before the show Shut the fuck. no <laughs> what are you talking about uh, see i told you <laughs> oh maybe we should then <laughs> Go get some gummy bears and see how these six stars of death are going to do. Make a six-hour podcast. Talking about yeah, right. yeah. I'll just podcast from my bed. What are you talking about? Let's fall asleep. All right, guys. <laughs> yeah, we lost Chad. <laughs> All right, guys. You have a All good right. night. Thanks, we'll take Bobby. care, guys. We'll see you later. Peace. Feel the excitement build. Show down in a ghost town Bad guys all